Hello again, everybody. It's TJ, the Stereo Bargain File, and I'm really pumped up today because I'm going to take the Polk Audio LSIM 703 large bookshelf speakers completely apart so we can see why this speaker sounds so good. You know, I've already done an in-depth review on it. I just pulled out the six and a half inch bass woofer for you all to show you the high quality, how it was built. But, you know, I asked the subscribers, hey, do y'all want me to do what I call pop the hood? And they're like, what's that mean? I mean, And I said, well, that means I take it completely apart so we can see the crossovers inside. We can see how everything is braced inside. Um, we can just see the, the total design of it. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that right now. But first, let's just take one more recap of what the six and a half inch woofer looks like and its build quality. I just got off work. I look pretty bad. But anyways, we're here about the speakers. I even look good when I look bad anyways. And here's your mid-cone driver. That is a super cell uh, aerated polypropylene speaker. It's got a massive spider. And as you see down here around the voice coil, see those two little drilled out? That is to keep it cool. It's got chrome. It's very heavy. On the bottom, you will see that it says Poke Audio. And I really like this aluminum frame a lot. That's a lot better than like a cast iron stamp plate. Very heavy. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead now and show you all how to take this speaker completely apart. And you've got to take off this rubber piece. And you've got to take it off. You've got to take a very small, thin screwdriver flathead yes that's got glue on it from work from my glue machines but it's pretty cool you know i work maintenance in a factory and we're building a brand new stingray corvette it's got me pretty pumped up pretty honored to do that by the way but anyways up here in the top middle you got to push in behind here there's a cutout you can't see and i'm going to pop this out but you got to be very careful when you take it apart because it has double-sided tape with this upside down figure eight and that double-sided tape, you want it to stick to this soft rubber. So I'm going to go ahead now and show you how to take this off. So you're going to stick it up here in the top. Try to keep my shoulder out. And I'm going to pop that out. Then I'm going to get back here and I'm going to go towards the left first. And I'm going to make sure this tape don't come off. Now I need to show you all what this tape looks like. So if you ever take it apart, you will know. So I'm going to pull this back. See that white tape? That's got to stay stuck to the rubber. So now let's go back. Get the phone settled back down. I'll take the rest of it apart. Okay, so I'm going to stay real close to that tape as I'm pulling it off. <clears throat> Do not want that tape. Ooh. Watch around these corners. Keep that other finger in there very good. Oh, here's the hard part. There we go. Oh. Keep pressure on it. Ah, there we go. Got it off. Here, I'll turn it the way it's supposed to be. And there you see it's got the double side tape. Now, when I put this back on, I'm not going to use no super glue or nothing like that. I want it to stay down well, but if you use super glue, it's going to set up quick. It's not going to let you push it around. It's got little cutout indentures that matches. But anyways, use something like what I got from Walmart in the craft section. Is this some clear gel tacky glue. Um, this will set up. It will hold down well. But if you ever need to take it back apart again, you'll be in good shape. So let's go ahead and see what it takes to take the mid cone and the ring radiator out. Well, you can see here with the mid cone... It's got four little bitty Phillips screws that it comes out itself. Or the mid cone in the ring radiator is sitting on a plate. This plate has six medium sized Phillips screws in it. So let's go ahead and get these out. And I'm going to show you all a neat little trick that you all can do to make sure that these little screws don't ever back out. Or if you're using bolts. Because something that you can really do good for your speakers is to go around all the woofers, around the whole box that has screws in it, basically. 
and tighten everything down. Because if, if your screws are a little loose and you get a little rattling, your speakers are not performing at the best that they can. And what I do when I put them back in, any kind of screws I put back in, I'm going to show you that. I'm going to give you all a couple uh, tips also when putting screws back in. I'm going to get to second to the last one and I'll show you what I mean. Okay. When I take a screw out so I know it'll never back back out on me again, I will get me some Gorilla Glue. And this is wood glue. And I'm going to put one little bitty, watch, one little bitty dab just like that and screw it back in and tighten it down. If I ever need to take it out, it'll be fine. But it, it will keep everything tightened down very well. Now, I already know the mid cone has its own like base port in behind it. So when I go to take this out all the way out, I need to reach up here and hold it so it don't fall out on me. Poke Audio done pretty good tightening these screws down, but I will make them tighter. Hopefully this don't fall. Did just a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, let me get a better picture on this. I'm gonna reach up in here. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna feed it out. And as you all can see here, it's got its own like little base port in a way. Let's get a closer picture. And here's your ring radiator tweeter. It's got a good size uh, magnet on it and a good cover. And it looks like it's held on with th three screws, small screw, one, two, and over on the other side from this one, three would be on the other side. And this whole ring radiator will pop out through the back and you have what you have your two speaker wires. You got speaker wires running in here in this tube. Here I'll show you all real quick. Let's take a deep, uh, closer look at this. You can see on the mid-range driver, let me go ahead and get a flashlight for you all also. Okay, I got a flashlight for you all so you can see the speaker wires go in right there and there's nothing else. It's hollowed out. So well, that's why there's four screws in the front of this mid range, mid cone, mid cone driver. That's where you'll actually take it out right there. But the ring radiator tweeter, you do have, as you can see right here, you got a screw there. You got one screw here. You'll have another little bitty Phillips here. And on the opposite side of this one, over on the other side, you'll have another one. Here, we'll go ahead and look at it. Sorry for the quick moving around. And there's the other one, and that ring radiator tweeter will pop out right in the back. And as you can see, where all these sounds dump out, they put a lot of acoustic feel in right there. One That is, I tell you, they built that very solid. Very thick, too. Lots of bracing everywhere. So let's take that feeling out because I was told that there's actually another crossover in behind there. So let's take that out now. Now this crossover will be jumped from the bigger crossover at the bottom and the speaker wires will come up to this crossover that actually uh, puts the sound out to the mid cone and the ring radiator. Sorry. I just want to take it out real quick. That was... Boy, that was a lot of uh, cushion right there. And there it is. That is at that crossover is actually, you can see wires coming in and two wires coming out. And look, they even put installation around the wires. Polk Audio done great with that. But now we're getting ready to go down here and take this acoustic filling out. Yes, I marked it so I know how to put it back in, the white acoustic filling. And we're going to take a look at that cro at the main crossover so let me pause this just for one second okay i'm back i went ahead and put the top piece one screw back in it because i'm getting ready to take out the bottom acoustic filling so we can see the bottom crossover so i'm gonna go ahead and take this out i marked this also and they put the same amount of filling on the top and the bottom which is a lot so you all ready to take a look 
at this massive crossover on the bottom. Well, let's take a quick look. Oh, goodness. Here we go. And there's the bottom crossover, the Poke Audio LSIM 703. Let me see if I can get you a hair more light. Oh, here we go. Pretty large. It's got some big, big capacitors in there also. And you can see them other two wires running up to the other crossover, again for the mid-cone and the tweeter. Poke Audio done a wonderful job. It's a lot of copper. Here we go. Copper on top and bottom. That's for that woofer. If you look inside here, they got all kinds of bracing. Wish I could get the camera in there better, but you can see the the bracing inside here they have in the corners. Poke Audio done an awesome, awesome job with this speaker. For the price, if you can get these under five hundred dollars, you stole these speakers. Under seven hundred, they're a really good deal also. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this real quick. And we'll get back and we'll have a recap. Okay, so you all have seen the Poke Audio LSIM 703 large bookshelf speaker broken all the way down. We got to see the two crossovers. We got to see the, the back, how the mid cone has it like its own base port in the back. We've seen all the acoustic filling. We've seen all the bracing. We got a close up of the actual drivers themselves. Uh, we've seen that they you know, uh, to take off the mid cone, there's four little screws in the front that you can take off to get it off. So you don't have to take off the whole, pretty much like an adapter plate that holds them both in. But with a ring radiator tweeter, you see in the back, you have three small Phillips screwdrivers. Now, if I was to take the plate off the back where the four five-way binding posts come off, when you take that plate off, all you're going to see is the back of the large, uh, crossover on the bottom you're going to see the large size circuit board with all the solder points on it that's all you're going to see and one last thing i want to say is sean from zero fidelity also done an in-depth review on these large bookshelf speakers the poke audio lsim 703 i highly recommend that you watch that review if you're interested in the speakers and if you're interested in the larger speakers uh thomas and stereo done a review on the LSIM 707s. He done an amazing review on them, and he used everything from budget gear all the way to high-end gear on them. And I highly recommend you watch his review if you're interested in the 707s. Uh, I hope you all got a good look at everything. I hope you all liked the video. And um, just remember, when you go to put your screws back in, when I go to put these screws back in, I will put a dab of Gorilla Glue. And when you go to put, you know, your upside down figure eight double sided tape, remember just to use some regular old, go to the craft section, get some clear tacky glue because it'll hold it down good enough. You don't want to use nothing like super glue because you may have to take it off again one day. And remember when you put it on, to keep it in the middle. That way when you push it on, it don't overrun on the inside or overrun on the outside. Just want to give you all some helpful helpful hints and um yeah until next time this is tj stereo bargain file y'all want a sneak peek i'll give y'all a sneak peek hold on let me turn it up a little bit all right sneak peek time for here's what's coming for the next review